What's going on everybody? Welcome to the 14th Python Tkinter and building a actual Tkinter application tutorial series. In this video we're going to be adding more options, more of the back end that we need to add. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to come down to CFBTC app and continue editing basically where we've been <clears throat> between um, the menu bar options and tk.tkconfig. Come down here and now we're going to add some more options. We're going to add basically the time frame of data and then also the actual open high low close bars what's the time frame for those as well so the window so we're going to go ahead and say data tf and this will be the time frame of data so are we going to look at one day of data three days of data a week of data so on so data tf equals tk dot capital m menu uh, and then we've got menu bar and then we're going to also allow this to be a tear off so tear off equals one and then we're going to say data tf uh, dot add underscore command the label for this command or, sorry it's under case L label will equal tick <clears throat> and then we're gonna do comma enter and then we're gonna say command equals lambda colon and then this will be a func a new function change time frame and then we're gonna change that time frame to tick data and that's it so now we're going to have a few more options. So let's uh, go ahead and highlight this, copy, and then um, basically paste um, three more times. So one, two, three. So we've got tick data. Then we're going to have uh, one day, and then change time frame to 1D. And then we'll have here, this will be uh, three day. I'll do capital D there change time frame to 3d and then here we'll have one week change time frame uh, 7d for seven days and then we're going to add this so this will be uh, menu bar dot add underscore cascade the label will equal uh, data time frame comma menu uh, will equal data tf okay easy enough um, now that we've done that uh, well let me see if we can go ahead and toss in uh, one more group of stuff uh, so we're gonna say oh low close then I'm gonna go ahead and say I here um, I honestly cannot remember what I meant I to be but capital OHLC could conflict with other things, other functions. So we want to just go ahead and we're throwing an I in there. I, I, can't, I would say indicator, but that's not what, what I meant. So I don't know, but that is what I used for the letter. So anyway, you can call it whatever the heck you want, but just so it jives with the actual GitHub, um, I'm going to leave it as I. So open high, low, close the I equals TK dot uh, menu. And then we want this on the menu bar. And then again, this one will be able to be torn off, tore off, torn off. Then uh, we're gonna say o h l c i dot add underscore command. And then this is basically, you know, how, what kind of data are we looking at? Again, we're going to allow it to pass through tick. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is basically highlight this right here and just do um, like this. So copy and then paste and so because people might consider open high low close like what kind of time frame are we going to use might still want to find tick there just in case but otherwise they're going to want a different um different stuff so we'll leave tick there for now but then we'll come through we'll copy that paste and now we're going to call this option one minute so this is one minute bars um and then instead of change time frame we're going to call this change sample size and this change sample size is going to take a few param or two parameters basically. The first is the sample size, so we'll call this one minute sample size. So the bars will be one minute open, high, low, close data. So one minute. And then the second parameter is going to be the width of the candlestick. Um, so if you have a high granularity data set here, um, the candlestick width needs to be very small because you're going to have a lot of candles. But if you don't have very many candles, it's hard to read if the candlestick is really small. So here, this is where we set the actual width of the candlestick. And this is the program name for the change sample size. Now we're going to take the same optionality here. We'll copy, come down here, paste. Uh, let's just paste a bunch. 
that might do it. <laughs> we want a bunch of them. So anyway, we got one minute, uh, five minute, 15 minute, uh, 30 minute, one hour, one hour, and then we're gonna call this three hour. Wow, so we only got one extra. Would have been nice to get it perfect, but anyway. Okay, so these are the time frames that we want right now. Um, so now you got one minute, five minute, uh, 15 minute, 30 minute, and then we have um, one H, and then we'll call this one three H. And then, so for the one minute, zero, zero, 005, uh, for five minutes, point zero, zero, 003, uh, for 15 minutes, point zero, zero, 008, Again, these are the widths of the candlestick. You'll see what I mean uh, once we visualize the candlestick. 30 minute, 0 0.016. Uh, one hour, 0 0.032. And then finally, 0 0.096 for three hours. Finally, uh, whoops, uh-oh. Finally, we'll come down here and we'll just say menu bar dot add underscore cascade label. Wow, how is that a label? <laughs> Label. I'm going crazy, guys. Uh, label, open, high, low, close, interval. And then the menu that we're adding here is actually OHLCI. Okay. So, looks like I've jammed that into about six minutes. So, we have time to actually make these functions now. So, if you are lost, you might want to pause right here and make sure you got all that data. Otherwise, we're going to continue on without you. So moving up zoom, to the very, very top. Now we've got a couple more, uh, well, really just one major um, constant basically to add here. It's not really a constant, it's a variable, but whatever. Anyway, resample size, and that's going to start as 15 minutes. So the def these are basically uh, the defaults and then the user can change them later. So the default exchange is BTCE. The default counter is 9,000 because it's going to restart immediately. The default sample size will be 15 minutes. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna say ch uh, define change time frame. And if you recall, there was only one parameter that we passed through here, which was gonna be time frame. So I'll just say TF. So in change time frame, what we want is we want to have um, dat counter, but then also we're going to have data pace uh, actually. So we're going to have data uh, pace here, and that's just going to be like how big of a data set do we have. And so we're going to go ahead and default to 1D for one day. So the default graph that's going to pop up is going to be BTC exchange. It's going to be one day's worth of pricing data, and it's going to be sampled at 15 minute open, high, low, close uh, candlestick bars basically. So Change time frame, TF, uh, we're going to global uh, data pace, and then we're also going to global dat counter. And then we're going to say if TF equals uh, 70, for example, and uh, resample size, resample size equals uh, one minute colon. So if this is the case, um, like we're asking for a week's worth of data and we're trying to plot it with one minute open high low close bars, that's too much data. It's gonna be just a really messy, ugly graph. So if the user tries to do that, we're gonna throw a pop-up message and that message will be too much data, uh, too much data chosen, choose a smaller time frame. Um, time frame or higher open high low close uh, sample size. Uh, open high low close. I think we call that interval. So yeah, we'll do interval. Okay. And as time goes on, we'll probably add some other sample sizes. So right now, the largest sample size is. Thank you, Skype. Is one week. So maybe the user wants to see one month or six months. Okay, so um, as time goes on, we'll add larger ones. So if the user cho chooses six months of a data frame, well, 15 minutes is probably uh, too small. So anything under 15 minutes uh, sample size with a time frame of uh, three months is too much or six months or whatever I said. 
So, um, so we'll need to, we'll end up having a lot more of these <laughs> as time goes on. So, uh, so we've got that, and now we're gonna say if that. So else, we're gonna say data, data pace equals the time frame, and then since there's been a modification, we're gonna set dat counter to nine thousand, and that will force an update later on that you'll understand more when we get there. So now that we've done that, the other thing that we have is um, sample size. Okay, so so we're gonna come down to um, to here, and we're gonna say define change sample size, uh, and this will be size width, if you recall. So this was the actual sample size, so the time length basically of the bar, and then this was the width of the candlestick. Uh, bar. So then we're going to need a global uh, resample size. Then we're going to global uh, dat counter. And then finally, we're going to global uh, candle width. And candle width doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and make that. So candle width. And we said that our resample size was 15 minutes. So if we scroll down here to 15 minutes, we'll see the default we should have is 0 0.008. So we'll scroll back up to the very, very top, candle width default 0 0.008. Now uh, that we've done that, we're gonna say um, basically the same thing as before. So if, if this is the case, we'll copy that, uh, paste. And eventually probably what we'll do is we'll make like one massive function that just runs through all of these checks. Like is any of these things true? And if so, that's too much data. Um, but for now, we'll just copy and paste this this single line since that's really only the only line that we have that would be a conflicting amount. Um, but there is one more problem. Uh, so if the user is trying to change a sample size uh, for the open, high, low, close data, but they're viewing tick data, um, that makes no sense. So we're going to have a, a, a warning here. So if uh, data pace equals uh, tick, if that's the case, uh, then we're going to have a pop-up message that just says uh, you're currently viewing tick data, uh, not open high low open high low close. Um, okay, that's that. So um, if if and then else if those two things are not the case, um, and really this is if. Uh, this probably sh this we really need to run this as an l if, and then this will be else. So that was kind of a bit of a problem in my uh, because basically this if will run and then this if would have run and the else would have only pertained to that if there. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> else re sample size equals size. Look at me finding bugs in my program. Dat counter. Uh, will equal 9,000 because we made a change. We want to force an update. Gee, Harrison, you could have made instead of dat counter, you could have said force update equals true. Anyway, uh, dat counter equals 9,000, and then finally candle width equals width. Boom, done. So now um, we've. Oops, that should be width like that. Now we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and test this. And to test it, let's make our time frame seven days and choose a sample size of one minute. See what happens. Run it. Hopefully no errors. I don't see any yet. We'll hit agree. So now we'll do a one week time frame there. And then we'll go open, high, low, close, one minute. Oh, got a bug. Name, TF not defined. Um... That's interesting because it's we passed TF here. Uh, change time frame. If TF it makes no sense, I'm looking at it right now <laughs> as something we're passing through a function. Hold on. Hold on now, everybody, wait. Name TF not defined if TF equals seven day and resample size. That's line 52 in change sample size. That's here. Um, okay, so resample size, change sample size. 
Yeah, so what, it's not actually occurring in this function. It's occurring in this function. So what we're going to go ahead and do is if what we need to be is if, if data pace, that's interesting because this is uh, another glitch in, or problem in my program. If data pace equals seven days, we have data. D, hold on, let me see here. This needs to be a capital D data pace. Okay, well, let's try that again. Um, yeah, I was looking in the other function for some reason now. So we'll go uh, one week for the data time frame, and then we'll go one minute. I still didn't get my error. One week. Oh, there we go. Too much data chosen. I wonder why it didn't happen the other way around. Okay, I guess it is. I don't know. Maybe an update occurred or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so now now it appears to me that our uh, function is correctly working. So again, we still we have you know the back end kind of logic is in place. The functionality still isn't there. We still have a few more things we need to do before we um, start building that because obviously we had quite a few options. Um, but we will get there. Uh, we've got the back end at this point, and then we'll just we've, like I said, we got pro I think. Probably about three more videos, and then we'll actually start having these options. Actually, doing something to our graph that'll be a lot more exciting. So, anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments about this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.